one thing we try to do here at Video is to be real. You know, to be who I am. And to reveal to you who Jesus is in a more personal and intimate way than maybe you've ever known before. But also, one thing that's happened when we started the Video Spirit series was that my impetus was to reveal the Spirit of God as I understood Him to be. And He began to reveal Himself to me as I never knew Him to be. <laughs> I mean, I had already been through, you know, like the Holy Spirit series two or three times with Chuck Smith, you know, in the two different series, and read the books and, you know, studied before my own different places, and I've listened to Pentecostals and, you know, Bacos and Evangelicals and all kinds of people, as well as studied in Jewish culture with Chabad, um, quite frankly, into reading the Tanya and studying some things that, you know, you know, it kind of opens your eyes to some possibilities. But then when I started the video series, the Spirit of God began to speak to me. Now that was eye-opening. And what I wanted to do in this video, especially about the video uh, Spirit, was that we haven't recorded any more because until I'm at peace, God forbids me from really putting out some more material about the Spirit of God. You see, we've come to a place where I'm still doing other things and I'm not focused in on allowing God to do what He wants to do with the series, which is I need to actually prepare myself to be less distracted and more attuned to what God would say especially in this video spirit series. And you know, it leads me to what this tape is about. Because I also, while I was thinking of making this tape, I realized that the Spirit of God wanted me to talk about a subject that bothers me a lot, but challenges me to present it in a positive way. And that's faking it. You know, faking it. Kind of like what some people do with like say this gift of tongues you know they watch television and then they imitate it and they promote it and they act like they have the gift of tongues because they watched it on TV or they've gone to a meeting where everyone was speaking in some unknown language or some unknown way and they imitate it the same way they act like they have something they never got that's faking it. You see, there is no such a thing as faking the gifts of the Spirit. There's no such a thing as faking the ability of the Spirit of God to move in a man's life or a person's life. And that brings me to the point that bothers me greatly and humbles me dramatically and why we are not going forward on this series until I have peace and God says, okay, go ahead. It's grieves me to no end to have been a part of a ministry that practiced when the Holy Spirit would speak. Mm -hmm. That as a pastor and worship leader, the person would practice breaks in his music and begin to say the exact same things that the Spirit of God would say in the middle of his worship service. That he would use that time practiced ahead of time to act as though the Spirit of God were speaking. Now, could the Spirit of God maybe given him a word before and kind of like, you know, like, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to let you know ahead of time. Sure. Except for God said no. And so, I was shocked. I was flabbergasted, uh, dumbfounded. I kind of I had to take two or three days to think about it because I, I just couldn't believe I had seen or even been a part of what I just saw. And I was on sound running the board 
watching and seeing this occur, faking the time when the Spirit of God would speak, or that God would speak through this person to other people. That disgusted me. Now, I had to deal with that attitude, and I got rid of that attitude, slowly but surely. God spoke to me and gave me a word on it, you know, and kind of began to, you know, share with me a lot of things. And it wasn't as though this person was 100% right on in every area of his life. No, I mean, I had already seen how different aspects of that person's life didn't measure up to, you know, the Word of God, and likewise how that type of ministry would not flourish and never has flourished to the degree that it could have. It's always been kind of a, you know, it's there, you know. People get saved, and it's there, but that's about it. And God uses, you know, people where they're at, even if they're flawed, you know, God will use you. And even if you're kind of faking it, God will still use you. But I don't know what will happen when you stand before Jesus and you've faked some gift of the Spirit or some ability you don't have. That bothered me. You know, and it, as I, you can see me stumble now and just not able to really relate it to Jesus because I think of in the book of Acts where, you know, the, the man was following Paul and the disciples around and he acted like he had the abilities that Paul had and was casting out demons in Paul's name and in Jesus' name and trying to imitate the things that God had done. And that man was chastised by a demon, eventually. Now, I don't know if that man was a Christian, but when I see a pastor, and even someone in my own household of faith, so to speak, <coughs> fake it, it's a lie. And there is no way to get around that faking. You can't tell me that... Well, you're just opening up the doors for, you know, maybe the Holy Spirit to inspire that moment. No, when it's word for word and it's by rote, you know, and it's repetition and it's just the same thing, you know, it's obviously faking it. And when I was dealing with this issue, I waited to see if maybe like, okay, maybe that's just kind of like, you know, that was then and this is now. So the next week, likewise, the same thing occurred. And it was slightly different, but, you know, still the same faking it putting it together in some kind of, like, you know, oh, this is when he will speak, and then you'll end it there, and then he'll be just, oh, okay, right, you know, and sure enough, after the practicing of that, I was there for the service, as a matter of fact, two services, and I was dumbfounded. I just couldn't believe that anyone would treat God because that's what the Spirit of God is. He's God. With such disdain and such lack of comprehension of who He is that they would just fake operating according to the Spirit of God. I watched, you know, and I saw, and I have to bear witness of it, you know, I prayed, you know, and I still pray for that ministry and that minister, you know, to repent, to change their ways, you know. And God knows that, you know, God bless them, what they're doing, but God caused them to come to a better conclusion than to fake it. So, what I learned from that was that, in that moment, I realized, that no matter what I do in ministry, no matter where I go or how I am, I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to get up in front of a bunch of people and tell them something that isn't true. I'm not going to get up in front of people and lie or manipulate or use some fallacy or some gimmick or some game to get them to believe, you know. Then once they're saved, you know, they realize, oh, well, they've been lied to. Because they have the Spirit of God. God can tell them, you were lied to. I mean, that's what happened to me. People told me, you know, behold, I stand at the door and knock as though that were some kind of evangelism tool, and it's gone. You know, I was lied to. And that's what it was, a lie. And whenever you use that scripture in Revelation to speak to non-Christians, you're lying to them. It's not for non-Christians, it's for the Christian. Because, literally, the Christians had removed God outside of 
their church. So he was standing at the door knocking to get back in. Because that's really where some of us are. We're not letting God in our lives. And my point of realizing that I can't lie is also why we stopped where we were at with the Video Spirit series. Because when I prayed and when I I know that God wants to speak on that series, beautiful things have been happening. You know? Not only has the Spirit of God been talking to you, but you know, like the hummingbirds coming and you know, all these different things that I talked about in the series, you know, they, they happen. They're very unique. I wish I could pan the camera to show you, you know, there's some really neat stuff going on. You know, I, I just can't imagine thinking, you know, I, I can't imagine trying to do the series, you know, when I'm not at peace. Which means that, oh sure, I have the peace of God that passes all understanding, and you know, I have peace enough to do other ministries, but for that part of sharing and relating what's going on in my life as God is teaching me also about His Spirit, the Spirit of God, I am so odd that I would not consider going forward until it's His timing. And when it's His timing, He'll let me know. That also makes me share and relate about Keith Green because Keith Green he didn't care if he was in the middle of 10,000 people or one person. If he felt something was wrong, he stopped what he was doing, got down on his face and on his knees, even under his piano, and prayed till God gave him a word or peace or some understanding of what to do and how to change what's going on. Because he would not allow worship of him to take place, but rather people would turn their face towards God. Now, obviously, some people probably did still do the wrong, but the heart of a man determines often the reality of where and what God can use that man for. It says that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro, searching for whom he may act strong on their behalf. I have seen mega ministries and mega pastors and lots of wonderful worship leaders, you know, great musicians and great songwriters. But I don't find many real people that will stop what they're doing. Quit the worship and adoration of the people around him to get right with God at that moment. Keith Green did. When you find a man of God that would do that, I don't care how small the church is or how big, I would stay with that man. I don't see it in the body of Christ at this moment. I wish I did. I would do it. If you invited me to your church and you know, I felt like something was off, I'd say, you know, I came with you know, this idea of talking about this, but God wants me to talk about this. You know, and We need to stop and pray. So let's just stop and pray. Let's don't do what we were going to do. Let's pray. And I would. That simple. That led by the Spirit. Because why would you put out there, and I don't with video, you know, anything that isn't of God. And I recorded some videos, you know, that, you know, I went, when I got done, I said, ah, that's garbage, you know, and erased them or just didn't bother posting them. I've started sometimes recording something and said, no, this, this, this isn't right. I need to pray about this. And I stopped it, went back, erased it, prayed, came back and recorded it again, fine. So you see, as many as it are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But as many as are faking it, I don't know what to tell you about them. Pray for them. Watch them. See what they're doing. But don't, don't give yourself over to loving or adoration of men who are being used by God. Because there's a lot of 
faking going on. There's a lot of things that sound good, that look good, it might even be for a short period of time, quote unquote, okay in some way. But once you see how the fruit begins to develop in their life, and you begin to see whether or not it was real, and God will reveal it, then once those things come to light, don't condemn the person, but rather commend them unto God in prayer, that they might quit faking what they could have had the reality of. Because what they did while they were faking proffers nobody anything. People will not get blessed by that person, though God may use them irregardless. You see, God can use the faking of a person and remove them out of the way and then come to that person that thought they were receiving something from the Lord and bless them in spite of that person's quote unquote gifts. Too often people are looking for the sensational and are easily deceived by those who fake their way into saying they have found a way to hear from God. When in reality, we should all be seeking the Lord alone with God to hear what He has to say as opposed to what some person may come to you and try to tell you about. Don't do it. Develop your personal relationship so you know the truth. It'll challenge your love at times because the man that I talk about was a very dear friend. And I cannot in all good conscience be a part of his ministry ever again. Because it isn't a question of repenting or you know being reconciled to that brother because I had no problem being in that ministry till I left when the Lord told me to. And I have no problem with you know praying for him and praying about him and all of that. But like Saul and David, when God anoints you he appoints you for doing something he wants you to do. I'm anointed to do this. He's anointed to do what he's done and to accomplish his purpose, whatever it may be. And God bless him for that. How he accomplishes that, Jesus will decide. Whether it be a work that suffers loss as passing through fire, or whether it be a work of righteousness that in some way God allowed to test my heart or test someone else's place in relationship to God in some way that they needed to see the contradiction so that their conviction would take it back to the Holy Spirit to be led rather than take it to the person and confront them in some way that God hasn't told them to though scripture may have it written in the Bible to do so you see it's easy to make a law and to write one or to abide by one. But it's a lot harder to take directions from God himself. And once you yield yourself to the Spirit of God to obey as he says to do, then you get challenged a little more because you find that just because it's written in the Word doesn't mean you're called to do it. You may be told to remain silent to just watch and see what God can do. And for me, I know, I saw the consequences of what happens to people when they fake it. And I don't want it. You know, I, I, I just look at that and I think, why would I do something that's going to bring back upon me the consequences of that kind of action when I already know that I have a hard enough time with the consequences of my own actions? Better to be found in the truth the life and the light than to be exposed for faking it. When God said, you'd be better off making it about my son, my will, and my will. Don't get caught up in that. Don't pretend you don't have something you don't. Don't contend with the false things that are out there, but rather Seek the Lord while he may be found. Let him give you what he chooses for you to have. And then abide in what he's given you. And don't worry about what's off to the left or the right, or behind you, or beside you. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Because as he leads you, he won't deceive you.